banned from Lowe's for life. But to be fair, shoplifting was my job. It wasn't personal. I like Lowe's, but I like drugs better. Security's job was to catch me, but it was going to take more than a few rent-a-cops for me to trade oxys for a cold, dark set. And yet, here I am. It took three security guards from two different stores to catch us. And even then, I got away, but Pukey didn't. And since we were pretty well known to the police, catching me didn't take long. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. If it wasn't for our insane addiction to drugs, none of these events would have ever happened. This is a true story that cost me a year in prison. We were about five years into an oxy addiction that was sweeping across our community like a plague. Oxy addiction is a self-induced prison sentence. It might start out innocent and fun, but it doesn't take long to wipe out your wallet and your morals. The things I did to obtain these drugs is absolutely disgusting. It was a cold winter day, and we liked the wintertime best for stealing because we got to wear our starter jackets. They were so big we could hide stuff under them easily, and if you were around in the 90s, then you remember. I had a Charlotte Hornets jacket, not because I liked the team or even knew that it was a college. It is a college, right? I just liked the colors and the fact that it was big enough for me to get a 12-inch subwoofer out of a store. Thanks, Mom! But car audio equipment wasn't on the list today. Sonny wanted some nail guns, so nail guns is what Sonny would have. He gave us a cold, crisp Ben Franklin for every one that we could bring him, and that was at least five Oxy-40s. Sometimes we could get two out of one store, so it was a one-stop shop for us, and then off to Sonny's Pawn Shop. I was driving the same Volkswagen that we used to rob the pharmacy in 1998. It was on its last mile or two, but it ran well enough to get us from store to store. Now, we had learned to leave the keys on the floorboard just in case we got split up, so one of us could get back to the car and maybe even pick the other up. Because we were so smart. But obviously not smart enough to keep us from going into Lowe's and stuffing two nail guns down our pants. Now this was a trick in itself because I'm six foot six and I would have to get on my knees and hide behind the aisle so no one could see my upper body as I stuffed this giant framing nail gun down my pants. Because we were so smart. After a few adjustments, I feel like I can walk, so we headed for the door. About 10 feet from the exit, Pukey looks at me all wide-eyed and says, Oh shit, here they come, here they come. And I'm like, who? Who's coming, bro? He says, security. What do you have in your pants? My penis. Now we start walking faster towards the door. Hey, you two, stop. Of course, our instinct was to run, but running is not a choice for me. Every step I take, this machine designed for rough framing houses is cutting into my upper leg. No, seriously, bro, I still have scars right now. They are telling us to stop and come inside so we can peacefully go to jail, which was the absolute last thing we were going to just roll over and let happen. At some point, I cannot get this damn nail gun out of my pants. It's buttoned and zipped into place. I have to get it out of my pants. I tell Pukey to keep them off of me. There's no chance I'm getting away if I don't get this heavy, sharp piece of metal out of my pants. So Pukey's guarding me against these dudes while I'm trying to get my pants unbuttoned and get this thing out so we can run. He's got his fist drawn back and he's yelling at him. And I remember him saying, back the fuck up. I can't let you touch him. Oh, he was so sweet. These security guards wanted to get us so bad, but they were easing back enough for me to get the nail gun out and get my pants buttoned again so that I didn't lose my trousers on the escape. You know, you ever see them dudes that wear their pants half hanging off their ass, underwear hanging out? Like, bro, that's embarrassing. Pull your pants up. So I buttoned up my silver tabs and I still have the nail gun in my hand. Now we take off running. We have no idea where we're going to go. But we run down the road towards the next parking lot, which is Cole's. Now I'm still carrying this huge nail gun. So I threw it in the little flower bed in front of Cole's. Pukey did the same thing with the Brad nailer he had. And in the door we go. Running as fast as we can right down the middle of the store. Now, if you have ever seen or heard two grown men running through a store, it sounds like a herd of cattle. So everyone's turning to look. Moms are grabbing their children, holding them close. Granny is clutching her pearls in the corner. And if smartphones were a thing back then, I'm sure we would have been caught on camera for sure. But this was like 1999. So flip phones were barely invented. We run to the back of the store towards the emergency exit, which is equipped with a fire alarm. So out that door we go, sets off the fire alarm, and now it's blaring in the background and we just keep running as fast as we can, straight to the mall. Now the mall is at least 500 feet from Coles, and on the closest end to us was Leggett's. Through the doors of Leggett's we go, and down the middle of the store. 
We're running as fast as we can to nowhere. We have no clue where we're going to go. I look back and see that there are two security guards from Lowe's or Kohl's or both. I really don't know, but they were chasing us like we stole something. After running all the way through the store and into the mall, the mall security guards were on us before we got halfway there. Stop! Stop! The mall security guard is yelling at us, but he's ahead of us and the mall splits three ways. So we decide to make a hard right past Chick-fil-A and headed towards the arcade. I have a super great story about when Pukey got knocked unconscious in that arcade, man. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear that one. So across from the arcade, there's a little kid's room and there's a sign to show the height limits to use the playground. And like I said in my last video about the pharmacy robbery, being in shape and going to the gym just wasn't part of our daily routine. So I am exhausted and I try to hide behind that stupid little sign. Everybody knows you never go full retard. Well, that lasts all of three seconds because one of the security guards chasing us sees me and starts telling me some nonsense about surrendering and all that go to jail shit. Jail was a place I was trying real hard to avoid. I threatened to punch him in his fat, ugly, stupid face. So he backed up a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He wasn't fat. He backed off enough for me to get out the doors and attempt to run again, which really wasn't working out at this point. But I wasn't about to give up, you know, because of the whole jail thing. Now I'm staggering down the road and he has his little pen and paper out. He's writing down a description of me along with my tattoos. After walking down the street for a while, I'm able to breathe again. So now I need an escape route. I know there's a motel on the end of the street. So I go in the front door and he follows. But as soon as I get a second out of his sight, I take off running out the side door and he gives up. He had his description written down. He was done chasing me. So I run as best I can up the hill and across the back of the parking lot over to Cracker Barrel. Now back then we didn't have phones in our pockets. They were still tied to a wall. I knew Cracker Barrel had a payphone, so I called my girlfriend at the time and she come to get me. We go back to the house. I'm good. I made it. Now of course I'm wondering what happened to Pukey, but that was on him, right? About an hour after getting back to the house, here comes like six cop cars, 12 cops, all shining flashlights in my face as they point 12 guns at me like I was an Al-Qaeda terrorist. Of course I give up and later find out that Pukey had tried to cross Interstate 81 when a state trooper was coming down the road just as the APB went out on the radio. And as soon as they got him, Pukey said every cop around knew that I was the tall lanky guy that got away. We were both convicted and I got 12 months which only added to the 60 months I received from the federal government for the pharmacy robbery. Six years and 14 days, door to door. I tell my stories in hopes that some of you watching can learn from my mistakes and my choices and make no mistake about it, they were my choices. I had several opportunities to clean up my life and be there for the people that cared for me and that I should have been caring for. But I kept hanging out with the same losers and I allowed them to influence me right back into the drug game every time. But I am proud to announce that recently I was offered Dilaudid. I got a text and someone offered me four milligram and eight milligram Dilaudid, which is something I used to love to do, absolutely ruined my life. And I can proudly say that I was able to tell that person that those drugs were the devil and to never ask me about them again. And you know, the best thing they could do for me would be to not tell me about them. And I went so far as to even tell them that if I call you tomorrow, and I tell you that I want some of that for any reason whatsoever, don't give them to me. Don't tell me you have them, tell me you're out of them, tell me whatever, just don't give them to me no matter what. And uh, I'm proud to say that I did that, man. Makes me feel pretty good about myself. And now even though I've drawn lines that I won't cross, um, I still smoke weed, I still have a beer or two. And I tell myself that that's okay because it doesn't put me in a cold, dark prison cell. I guess we all have certain things we use to cope and um, I'm working on quitting more of those things. I'm working on, I wanna stop smoking, I wanna stop drinking. I like to quit smoking weed if I possibly could, man, and I'm working on those things. I make these videos because every day is a struggle. Every day is a blessing and every day is a curse. And if I can make any of you understand that the drug game, and I don't care if it's pharmaceuticals or street drugs, it's just not the way to go, man. It's just not. I believe that wisdom comes from experience. And although I wouldn't call myself wise, I definitely call myself experienced in this. So trust me when I tell you it's not something you want to play with. So if you made it to this point in the video, man, show some love, drop a comment, hit the like, share this video, man, and uh, hit that notification bell. Stick around for the next one. Thanks for watching and don't forget. Drugs are bad.